Diabetes is when your body is not making enough insulin to control your blood sugar levels. That all sounds a bit scientific and strange, but in practice it means that you can't use the fuel that you eat. So when you eat food, it gets absorbed into your tummy, it gets into your bloodstream, but without insulin, you can't actually use that sugar or glucose that's been produced. And so you can't use it for energy. And that's one of the main reasons people, when they first develop diabetes, feel so tired. Because whatever they eat, it's not being able to use that fuel and build it into the muscles. And so there are two forms of diabetes. There's type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. They're both quite different in that type 1 diabetes happens because the pancreas, which is the organ in the body that produces insulin, just suddenly stops producing insulin completely. The symptoms come on very rapidly and they include things like excessive thirst, going to the toilet a lot for a wee, particularly getting up a lot at night for a wee. People with type 1 diabetes usually get very dramatic, very quick weight loss and they're also prone to a lot more infections like water infections, thrush and boils. So their symptoms come on really fast and the only treatment for those people is insulin injections. It's an immune condition, so your body's immune system is supposed to be fighting off infections. But sometimes you make too many antibodies, your immune system is like it's gone into overdrive and it starts attacking part of the body. And in diabetes, type 1 diabetes, the pancreas gland gets inflamed, angry and then shrinks away and it stops making insulin. Type 2 diabetes also can affect anyone but it's much more common in older people. It's usually related to being overweight, not having enough exercise, or if there's quite a strong family history, or if the person has had pregnancy diabetes before. But it does run quite strongly in families. So if you've got type 2 diabetes in your family, you've already got a higher chance of developing it yourself. Other people at risk of type 2 diabetes are people of South Asian, African or Caribbean origin. Usually your body is still making insulin, but you're getting more and more resistant to the insulin. So you need to make more and more to do the same job. The insulin levels get higher and higher, the body gets more and more resistant, and it gets into a real vicious circle. And that's often got a lot worse if the person is gaining weight as well at the same time. The symptoms can be quite difficult to spot, and often the person's only diagnosed because they've actually had a blood test or been to see the doctor about something different, and the diabetes gets picked up. It can creep up on you. The, generally speaking, people with type 2 will feel fine for the first year, two, maybe even five or ten years that they've got the condition until gradually their, their body just can't make enough insulin to keep up with demand, their sugar levels rise and then they start to feel really quite tired and run down, often get infections, things like thrush or urine infections and gradually they realise something's just not right. Well, normally what would happen is if you eat foods that contain carbohydrate, and that's things like bread, rice, pasta, potatoes, cereals, there's also fruit has got carbohydrate in it and fruit juice, those foods break down in our gut and release glucose, and then that glucose absorbs into the bloodstream. And what happens from there is that that glucose is our energy source. And all of us have glucose or sugar in our blood because that's what all of us use for fuel. It's what makes our bodies work properly. But we need some form of messenger or some hormone called insulin to carry the glucose from the blood into all the cells that need it for energy. So if the insulin isn't working very well, it doesn't carry the glucose energy very well to the cells and so people become very tired. And if the insulin isn't there at all, then the glucose doesn't travel out of the blood. It stays in the blood all the time. So when a blood test is done, the glucose level is really high. Bodies are very clever. Bodies are designed to deal with whatever you happen to be doing, whatever you happen to be eating. So say, for example, I have a lie-in and don't eat any breakfast all morning my body will recognise that and will control my blood sugar level anyway. I won't go low just because I haven't eaten. The insulin and other hormones in my bloodstream will vary minute to minute, up a bit, down a bit, to keep my blood sugar level pretty steady all the time. 
Um, the trouble with diabetes comes in when the body has either stopped making insulin or can't keep up with demand, isn't making enough insulin. And that leads blood sugar levels or glucose levels to gradually get higher and higher. If you have high blood glucose levels for a long period of time, they can damage parts of the body. So, for example, they can increase the risk of having a heart attack or a stroke. They can also damage the retina, which is at the back of the eye. It can also damage the kidneys, so kidney function won't be as good as it should be. And it can also affect the circulation and the nerves in the feet. Living with diabetes is something that nobody chooses to do, and it's nobody's fault. But either way, we've got to get on and deal with it. And we take it very seriously at the Elsie Birchland Diabetes Centre that we want to help people gain control over their diabetes so their life isn't dominated by diabetes. It's just something they have to deal with. You can get back in control, and that actually not only makes you feel better now, but has a massive impact on whether diabetes will affect your long-term health in the future.